Hello guys. Welcome to another medical equipment series video of Biomedical Engineers TV. In this series, we will learn about ventilators in a simplified manner without going in deep terminological details. Our concern is to learn about the machine in simple definitions, which you will never forget. In this ventilator series, we will learn about introduction of ventilators, classification of ventilator, application of ventilators, ventilator modes, and types of therapy in ventilators. Let's start the video with the introduction to the ventilators. The first form of mechanical ventilator can probably be credited to Paracelsius, who in 1530 used fire bellows fitted with a tube to pump air into the patient's mouth. In 1653, Andreas Vesilius recognized that artificial respiration could be administered by tracheotomizing a dog. The history of mechanical ventilation begins with various versions of what was eventually called the iron lung, a form of non-evasive negative pressure ventilator widely used during the polio epidemics of the 20th century after the introduction of the drinker respirator in 1928. Improvements introduced by John Haven Emerson in 1931 and the both respirator in 1937. Other forms of non-evasive ventilators, also used widely for polio patients, include biphasic cuirass ventilation, the rocking bed, and rather primitive positive pressure machines. Let's begin with classification of ventilators. The ventilators can be classified as hospital care ventilators, home care ventilators, transport ventilators, neonatal ventilators, also known as HFOs, and last but not least, sleep study respirators. Let's begin with hospital care ventilators. Apart from its supportive role in patients undergoing operative procedures, mechanical ventilatory support is indicated when spontaneous ventilation is inadequate for the sustenance of life. The word support bears emphasis. For mechanical ventilation is not a cure for the disease for which it is instituted. It is at best a form of support, offering time and rest to the patient until the underlying disease processes are resolved. Results with mechanical ventilation are consistently better when mechanical ventilatory support is initiated early and electively, rather than in a crash situation. Most hospital care ventilators are used for ICUs, emergency trauma, or the patient are suffering from hypoxia or hypoventilations. Let's move on to home care ventilators. A wide range of home care ventilators, HCV, are now available for long-term mechanical ventilation. HCVs are heterogeneous with respect to technical performance and reliability and their user-friendliness for the operator. However, this extended range of commercially available machines makes the choice of the best device for different categories of patients more difficult. Further, manufacturers often propose new ventilatory modes. But, as in the acute critical care setting, scientific evidence of their effectiveness and clinical benefit is often lacking. When choosing a HCV, clinicians rely on personal experience and on the results of observational trials, ideally. The process of choosing a ventilator should be based on a strong scientific rationale, founded on predetermined requisites and scores, as in the critical care area. Because manufacturer's specifications alone are of limited importance, they should not be a prominent factor in the decision-making process. Basic knowledge of the principles of ventilator functioning may be helpful when choosing a HCV. This enables the physician or respiratory therapist to consider the HCV technical performance in relation to the patient's clinical characteristics and underlying disease, the home care environment and the available financial resources. 
The primary purpose of this guide is not to compare the individual features of each ventilator, but rather to provide general information about the technical aspects of such ventilators, which may help in the decision-making process. Let's know about transport ventilators. Transport ventilators provide ventilatory support for patients who cannot breathe on their own or who require assistance maintaining adequate ventilation because of illness, trauma, congenital defects, or the effects of drugs like anesthetics. Transport ventilators are designed to take the place of manual ventilation or bagging during emergency or transport situations. Ventilators designed for inter-hospital, intra-hospital, or pre-hospital emergency transport. These units typically consist of a flexible breathing circuit, a control system, monitors, and alarms. Power is typically supplied by one or more internal batteries, an external battery, or an alternating current line. Common operating modes available on these units include control mode, assist control mode, and SIMV mode. Some may have additional operating modes such as CPAP and pressure support to facilitate patients with more complex oxygenation and ventilation requirements. The next classification of the ventilator is High Frequency Oscillation Ventilator. HFV is a new technique of ventilation that uses respiratory rates that greatly exceed the rate of normal breathing. There are three principal types of HFV. 1. High Frequency Positive Pressure Ventilation HPPV, which delivers breath at rate of 60 to 150 BPM. 2. High Frequency Jet Ventilation HFJV, which delivers breath at a rate of 240 to 660 BPM. 3. High Frequency Oscillatory Ventilation HFOV, which delivers breath at a rate of 300 to 900 BPM. The advantage of high-frequency oscillatory ventilation as compared to either conventional positive pressure or jet ventilation is its ability to promote gas exchange while using tidal volumes that are less than dead space. The ability of HFOV to maintain oxygenation and ventilation while using minimal tidal volumes allows us to minimize barotrauma and thus reduce the morbidity associated with ventilator management of RDS. At last, let's wrap up with sleep study ventilation. Critically ill patients have severe sleep disruption and typically encounter loss of circadian sleep pattern, steep fragmentation, increasing proportions of transitional stages of sleep, and loss of slow wave and rapid eye movement sleep. Mechanical ventilation is associated with these same sleep abnormalities. But what is attributable to the intensive care unit environment versus mechanical ventilation itself may be difficult to discern. Recent studies have shown that the ventilator mode and inappropriate settings can contribute to sleep fragmentation. And it is important to avoid overventilation that can induce central apneas when using spontaneous breathing modes. Non-evasive ventilation in the acute setting seems to be associated with the same sleep abnormalities as invasive ventilation. Long-term non-evasive positive pressure ventilation assists ventilation nocturnally and improves for patients with chronic respiratory failure caused by restrictive thoracic disorders. This was the classification of ventilators. In the next video, we will learn about types of ventilator, ventilators, and modes in ventilators. Till then, keep watching Engineers TV. See you guys in the next video.